Hello everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making three different 1850s bonnets. Alright, so my Timely Tresses order came in. So all our stuff is in the lovely bonnet box. I'm going to go ahead and open it, see what's in. So I have, let me move the camera down a little bit so y'all can see better. So I have a straw form that we're going to cover. And so um, this is what just, this is what Danielle had in stock was a white one. I didn't necessarily really want the white. Um, and I could have, you know, done a custom one, but I decided to go with the white. And I think it's going to look good. So the reason that I decided to do this now, even though I'm not really doing any 1850s events, is a friend of mine very sweetly gave me some lovely silk ribbon. Those of you who do costuming know it is impossible to find actual silk ribbon. This is silk satin written ribbon in a 5 inch width, which you cannot get anymore. This is actually a vintage stock. Um, so it's like 10 yards on the roll. Um, she gave me the brown for 10 yards. And a mutual friend she gave the blue. We kind of decided that we're going to each do two bonnets. One of brown, one of blue. So this one I'm going to do the brown with. And an early 1850s form. The variety of Louia. She even wrote it in there, which is awesome. Because I forget which one's which. And there is an early 1850s bonnet that I absolutely adore. That is yellow and blue. And I've decided, you know, let's go ahead and copy that, but my blue isn't that blue. The blue that silk ribbon is like a navy blue. It's a really dark royal blue. I think we're starting the straw one. That one seems most logical. I think first we're going to need to cut a facing. So I'm thinking about just doing a gather facing because it's easiest, the thing to cut. So I need it. Let me find my tape measure. The widest point. So if I cut it about four inches, we'll do four and a half to be safe. And I need it uh, about 34 inches. Minor update, I need to go buy more white silk. So I'm having to piece this facing in a couple places, which is not ideal, but it's gonna be covered by the little net frill. So we're gonna be okay. Um, the cool thing is that a friend gave me an original sewing machine. It's actually from the 1880s, but um, the model is from the 1850s. And so I'm sewing it together with that. And I ironed the top edge over so it's nice and clean. You can also cut a facing directly from the pattern piece. And that way you get a fitted facing. I just kind of like the gathering look. Facing is stitched on and I did a gathering thread. So now all I have to do now is pull on it. Next I'm going to cut a facing, probably of organdy. Sorry, this is the facing. We're going to cut a lining of organdy and line this part of the bonnet. Alright, and so I'm just going to pin this in and we'll sew that on real well in a minute. This is probably a, a better piece to actually do the uh, fitted one. Fitted lining, but it's okay. By the way, this is not organdy, it is tarlatan because I didn't have any organdy apparently. I'm just finding out that I have apparently run down my stash of a lot of things. At which point the boring part really ends and we can start doing the fun part which is like trimming it. I still gotta do a little frill but the frill's kind of fun too. And we're gonna get this one completely done before starting on the silk one. Mostly because the silk hasn't come in yet. I really thought I had some brownish gold silk in the stash and I cannot find it. I know it's somewhere because I don't remember I do not recall using it, so it has to be somewhere. I just have no idea where that somewhere is. And here we have our netting, um, the very fine reproduction netting. Ideally it would be silk. You also see originals in cotton, it's just not as common to find them in cotton. But cotton's a whole lot cheaper than silk netting, so still very expensive, but it is cheaper than silk. So I'm going to cut four inch strips, and I think I'm going to need three strips. Alright, let's put on the frill bits. I gotta find the halfway point on this and the halfway point on the bonnet. I'm gonna line that basically where the facing gets lined up. Alright, I'm gonna whip this all on. I actually gotta put the other one on first. Then we'll whip it on. At which point we'll be ready for trimming. I so much white. <laughs> I'm very much looking forward to putting some color on this. 
put that on. Let me go ahead and start using the brown ribbon for this and cut it at the bias first. And it's going to be 38 inches from this point. So I'm move that down a little bit. All right, I'm going to go right ahead and pleat this up as well. looks like right now. Just like that. And so it'll just be like a little pretty mini ruffle on top. The bonnet is basically done. The, fr the frame is basically done. All you need to do is decoration now. Let me pin this in first to figure out exactly it's where it's going to be. So that's what it's going to look like. Try to move some of these around because you don't want it to be too sparse or too much in one area and that's pretty secure with those two pins that's so not going anywhere after trying it on i think we're going to make the decision that only two feathers and they're going to be coming off the sides over here so we're going to decorate the outside we'll just make a whole bunch of leaves and flowers and put some feathers on the side too and these are going to try a pin in as well and then we have to just do ties all right so this is what my little piece ended up looking like feathers on either side I need to work on being a little bit more you know, steady, but it's okay. And then the flowers and the leaves. I'm just going to pin this. I'm going to move this leaf back. You can see all my lovely, you know, messy bits here. Pin that around so you don't see the pin. Alright, I think we're about done with this. Well, actually, no, we have to do ties. I'm going to tack on the ties now. Tie number one. I gotta do the other tie and then we're gonna wait around till the silk comes in for the other bonnet. And we can get started on that. So let's get started. Here is the silk we're gonna be using. It's a nice blush colored silk taffeta. And y'all know how I do this on this channel. I don't like to make mock ups, I kinda just wing it and hope for the best. So, um, and I thought I had the pattern for this so I would actually be able to like cut the pattern. I do not. Um, as it turns out, I have most of her other bonnet patterns, just not this one. So I had to put it, you know, on paper, or I had put it on paper and I just rolled it. And so I now have a pattern piece. <laughs> so yay. Um, but most of the originally, but the original is mostly like drawn and with little frills. And I think I have a good idea about how to replicate this. Uh, of course, I haven't seen the bonnet in person, so this is going to be a little bit of conjecture. But um, what I think I'm going to do is I think it's in three pieces. So there's like the tip, which I have a pattern piece now here. So the tip here. And I think the, I'm going to do two pieces for the um, back. I'm going to do the first part, which has two little drawn bits here. And then four little ruffles. And I think so another drawn bit and then some space. That's just like open fabric. I think like an inch. I'm like totally guessing on all this. And so what I think I need is 12 inch strips, um, which seems like a lot, but I'd rather cut them too big than too small, because I can work with strips. And so to have like so a couple bits so drawn and like the, the um, ruffle bits are going to need extra fabric and anyway, it should work. And then, um, so yeah, I'm going to do one piece for this part and another piece for this part is what I think I'm seeing. I could be totally wrong, it really could be one piece, but it makes more logical sense to me to do it in two pieces. And I have a lot less chance of messing the whole thing up if I do it in two pieces. So that just sounds good to me. Um, as far as the length, the whole bonnet is really, or most of the bonnet, is uh, 21 inches. And I think I want to do twice the amount, so like 42. So 12 inch strips. Two 12 inch strips be more than enough. So there's the tip. I think we can go ahead and sew this on. I think, yeah, let's go ahead and sew this on. Alright, there's a little bit of a gathering thread. Just sew this. I'm just going to get sewn better later, so I'm not going to 
really sew it together. I just want it to sort of tack it on so it's out of the way. And this is going to require quite a bit of playing, I think, to get the shape right. Um, or the design right. So I might do the top half on my own. So I don't have to worry about getting everything in the frame and all that. And then whatever I figure out, we're going to do... It's basically the exact same thing for the second half. So I'll show you all on the second half. I think it's what's going to be best. Just so I don't get frustrated and y'all get to see things. Because sometimes I, when I'm... When I'm trying to figure things out, sometimes I don't get things, you know, directly in the frame, and, and I feel bad because y'all can't see. All right, bonnet update. I got the first part done. It looks amazing. I am just so happy with it. Like, look at it. It is so pretty. I think I may have a new favorite bonnet. Like, it's taking forever, but it's working. So we're going to do the second half. The 12 inches was more than enough. I'm actually probably going to end up cutting about maybe 2 inches off of here right now. But um, right now it's working. I'd rather it be too long than too short. So what I'm doing is just taking the length of thread that is basically the length of the fabric. Now that I have my thread to the right size, I'm going to attempt to pick up my needle. Thank goodness. Okay. Now I'm going to fold this over a little bit, um, at least the raw edge, and I'm going to make basically a channel for the um, cane. Now uh, for the top one, I did do a little running stitch about quarter of an inch in before I folded it over, just because um, this edge, I wanted to be able to fold that, in, to like really gather that in close. So it fit really nice to the brim. So I did like a, you can see my little seam there, about a quarter of an inch in. And then about half an inch over is where I started the uh, fit here. Honestly, I wish I had made this about an inch longer. Because uh, this is going to be kind of a pain to hide those little stitches when it's that close to the edge. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and mark where you sew. Which is for me... About a quarter of an inch in. I'm going to start sewing a little bit in because this little part I'm probably going to end up making a casing because this fits together. There's a seam right here. So I'm going to need to make a seam there eventually. So I'm not going to start at the very edge. I'm going to start a little bit over. Alright, that row is done. We are not going to be gathering this row, so I went ahead and tied that off. So, we're going to make another thread the same length as our silk. Alright, now what we're going to do with this one is we're going to fold this back. Just like this to kind of create something that looks like that. So there's our raw edge pulled out. And we're going to make another, I guess, casing. So we want the same size as our first casing, so I'm going to fold it to where my seam's about in the middle, and I'm going to start stitching right on the edge. So right now what I did is I measured 7 inches up from this last channel, and I'm, I put a mark there, and then I'm going to mark about 7 eight, seven inch down from that. We're going to make our ruffles. So now I get to fold that up. I'm going to mark all mine before I start sewing this time. Last time I did one, sewed it, and then marked the other one. But I want to make sure this works before I put all this handwork in. And these we are going to gather, so they definitely need to be hand stitched. Actually, to make this easy, what I probably am going to do is just mark a little bit of all four of them to make sure, like, the math's going to work out, and then I'll just do one at a time. And to mark the next one, I went, let's see, a little bit up and mark an inch from there. Just a little bit up. And folded that about right there. I was hiding the stitching. So 
but I'll show you again in a minute. I'm just trying to test this out to see if this is gonna work. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. That's exactly what I wanted, so yeah, we're good. Take this little bit out, we'll do that again in a minute. All right, found my needle. All right, found my thread. There was a needle attached, but I don't see it. I'll probably find it with my foot later, it's fine. So, I'm going to just, same basic thing. Now we are gonna have to end up cutting a good portion of this off um, to make it fit the bonnet shape. So you don't have to put like a knot or anything in it. We're just gonna, we'll work on that later. But I'm gonna sew right on the bottom edge. This is the back side, so I'm gonna sew right on the edge. What I've been doing on these is from the stitching line marking an inch. And then we're gonna take our little line Fold it up to cover the stitching. So it ends up being less than an inch around the 7 eighths that we did before. Right. And so on the back, what it's going to look like is our third row. And we're doing the same thing. Very edge, doing our stitches. All right, let's put our cane into the fabric. So I have pre-stoked my cane, and you want to do that, otherwise you will snap them. Just trust me on that. Yeah. Alright, so all push through. I sew together the very ends, so there's my cane on either side, and that, so if you turn it like this, and I'm going to make sure that this, the cane should go to the seam, basically, so I made it exactly what it needs to be. So, now we get to do the fun part of putting it onto the bonnet. Probably would have been smart to, like, mark the halfway point on this, but, oh well. Alright, I'm sort of distributing the gathers around. Being and cooperative. I really had wished I started from the center, but now I don't know where the center is, so it's been interesting. So when sewing together, I sewed between the two uh, cores. It's like, that's what I did up here. So I'm going to try to do the same thing again, making sure everything's kind of evenly distributed. But I think that's going to work. I said to work in the back because this cane needs to go flush up against this. So um, I'm going to need to like really hold it down for that. And that's not going to be easily filmed. So I think I'm just going to keep, keep working on this. And I'll see you for the next step. Which will be, well, then gathering thread on this so that I can draw that up so we can finish this. All right. I put gathering thread in, and this finally got sewn in. It took a while, and it's not great back here, but mm, it's the bottom and back of a bonnet, so we're going to leave it. I really don't know how to make it better. So I'm going to pull my gathering thread that I put here. Move that around to kind of evenly distribute some gathers there. Now I have this really long thread here. I'm just going to tack this down with this long thread. So I'm just going to sew it, loose stitches, and make sure that it just, you know, stays. I think I can go ahead and cut some of that off. Oops, that needs to go under because that's a rudge. I need to make sure I watch for that. And now that stitch down, we get to gather all this bit. So I'm going to take the thread, actually not that one, look on this one, aren't we? I'm going to pull it, make sure I'm tucking that raw edge under, I certainly don't want that. I'm flipping this second one up, I'm going to stitch that down in just one moment. I want to be able to see where the stitching goes. I'm getting there. 
uh, after I finished sewing, I started pulling on the extra one, so I have one more to pull, which is this last one. And I'm not sewing these down at all, I'm just pulling on them. I'm trying to pull from each end, that way it doesn't break on me. That's good, okay. That one's good. I like that. Alright, let's tie this off. Alright, we're working on the curtain. So I have um, Time and Trust's Lavina Ruth pattern, and so I use that for the curtain pattern itself. And then now I'm making the roughly bit that goes on the bottom. So I cut a strip that is, what is it now? I had to add some more because I clearly didn't measure correctly the first time. It is six inches wide now. And I put in uh, just over an inch uh, mark there. And then we're going to fold it and then match the ends. And it makes a ripple. All right, so bonnet skin, frame is done. The curtain is done. All right, so curtain is done, so I've been working on bonnet itself. Um, I got the ribbon, so it's a four inch wide ribbon, 100% uh, silk, I don't know if we talked about it yet or not. So um, I basically just took the ribbon, put in a piece of cane, just like we did on the front, exact same thing, and now I'm stitching it to the bonnet itself. I am gonna gather this bit too, I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Alright, I am gathering the inside of the facing that we made. Oh, look at it. She's looking so pretty. Alright, I think I'm going to go ahead and tack the facing down. Alright, it's starting to look almost done. So, lining is in. It's just a little strip of tarlatan. And we're going to just stitch it right in. It is quite full. I think if I did this again, I wouldn't make this curtain quite so full. Or I'd pleat it. That's another way to get that taken care of. It's coming together. Look how nice it's looking. So I trimmed one side. We're about to trim the other side. Here's my ribbon. And I have all folded up. And it starts yeah, about that much. Okay, so right, right here. I'm going to tack this in, but not, yeah, not make it super secure. You want some movement. Alright, there's bonnet number two. That turned out so cute. I love it. Let me go look at what we need to do for bonnet number three. Alright, so, next bonnet. We have this lovely open work straw bonnet from Anna Warden Bowersmith. Um, locked on original um, bonnet block for the late 1840s and the early 1850s. So I went through some originals and then rechecked with the seller just to make sure. But yes, you can either line and face these open work ones or you can just leave it. I'm going to leave it so I can have a really nice cool one for summer. So I found an original that I love from the Met and that's what I'm deciding to go with. So we only have one view and it's of this side of the bonnet. And you can see the trim gort coming up here. We're going to go all the way around and end it like right here. And do the curtain and the ties. And that's really all we're going to need to do. Now the trim work is quite interesting. It has that little chevron shape. So here's how we're doing that. I need my ruler and my chalk. And basically what I'm doing is starting from a point. And I'm going to five inches. This is just my mark. You could do six. Basically, the narrower you do it, the more V-like the points are going to be. The wider you do it, the more scallopy they're going to be. So these are going to be fairly pointy. I could have done six, but I don't feel like redoing the work I've already done. So I'm just going to mark that. Now I have a point here. I'm going to put that point on the five and go up to where that meets and mark that. Put that there, mark my five here and keep going. 
So now I have several done. I don't want to do them all right now because it is chalk that's going to come off. So I have my thread. I'm using the same silk thread. I could have done it pink because I have pink, but I didn't think about it and I've already started. So we're going to do this. And I'm just going to use a fairly loose stitch. I need to go change my needle because this needle is not wanting to go through this taffeta ribbon. Yeah, we're going to go on the marks in this little V shape. And so when I pull it, it creates this shape. And normally I finish all the trim before I start putting on the bonnet, but I'm not sure how this is going to measure out. I'm just going to work on it as I work on it. I actually probably won't need too much more. I think it's going to take a little bit less than I thought. Alright, got a little bit more done. And I've kind of just been, you know, pinning it as I go. But this might be enough. It may not be, but we'll find out in just a second. I'm just going to move around these. That looks pretty good. Alright, curtain. I pleated it down and we are sewing it on. And I'm going to recut these ends because I found an original that I'm going to copy for the trim work inside. Hers are really interesting. I can't remember how she did this. And then we're going to attach it right in here. It's nice to kind of go like that. This rubber is very hard to sew through. Alright. Yeah, I think that's going to give me the effect I want with those like flying out. I think I want this more like going this way though. All right, bonnet number one. So dressed up in the later 1850s, so hoop, hoop is on. Um, yeah, it's one of the reproduction dresses we made on the channel, uh, copied nearly exactly from an original in my collection, so I'll post that link above so you can go check that video out if you haven't already. But let's try on our bonnet. We really don't have a bonnet stay on, but I'm not gonna need a bonnet stay. That's gonna stay on just fine. I'm going to have to move the camera because y'all can't see the whole bonnet. Just give me a moment. Alright, hopefully that's a little bit better. I think it is. So yeah. I'm going to tie a silk knot here. Silk ribbon feels really, really nice. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely feels very different than the rayon and polyester stuff that I'm used to. So yeah. Here's bonnet number one. Oh, here comes the dog. You can't touch the silk ribbon, baby. I'm sorry, I wasn't here to talk to you. You thought I was here to give you attention. I'm sorry. And the parasol for when I go out. Pick one of my later 1850s ones. This one's been recovered. And yeah. I thought this one would go really well with the red dress. Why are you so bu being busybody today? Why are you a busybody? Yeah, I did spend all afternoon doing nothing, sitting on the couch with you, giving you attention, and it's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> you just untied my bonnet. That wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. I like you too. <laughs> yeah, that's the bonnet. Uh, it turned out really cute. I'm loving the color scheme. I'll show you the side of the bonnet. And the back. And the other side, a little bit. Oh, you're hiding it. You were lost in the hoop skirt. I'm sorry. That's why you were yelling at me. Animals are feisty today. But yeah, that's um, the later 1850s bonnet. All right, wardrobe change. So we're in the early 1850s now without a hoop. So just petticoats now. Lots and lots of petticoats. Sorry you're hearing the dogs. They're playing. So we have our beautiful worked drawn bonnet with all the ruffles. Let's try her on. I actually have not tried her on with this hair, so it should be very interesting. Hmm. 
one that they didn't quite catch that time. Okay, there she is. Good. There we go. All right, there she is. That turned out really, really cute. Um, I'm not usually a big fan of the stuff being at my ears because I find it hard to hear. And yeah, it is a little bit odd, but these don't wrinkle or crinkle as much as my other ones do. So I think I'm more okay with this one. Um, yeah, and I think because it's set further back that it's not bothering me as much. So that's quite pretty. Quite pretty. Alright, to the side. Back. Other side, although it looks exactly the same, so we have it turned either side. And of course the front again. So for this one, I picked my earliest parasol. Which, uh, I should say my earliest parasol. My earliest recovered parasol is appropriate for the early 50s. You know, this is my earliest recovered parasol, because I haven't recovered any of my 30s or 40s ones. So yeah. There she is. I did learn I need a, another early parasol, because all my dresses are blue and my only parasol is blue. That's a lot of blue. And then now this bonnet is partially blue. At least this parasol has, like, gold in it, so gold and black and brown, so it's not, like, totally just blue-blue, uh, which I appreciate, but yes. That's essentially what this outfit would look like. Um, this one, I just love this bonnet. Uh, the color scheme turned out so well. The original one is much brighter, which is nice, uh, and I like that. Yellow around my face doesn't really work very well. Uh, maybe the blue would have cut it down enough to where it would be acceptable, but um, I couldn't do the yellow with this navy blue. I thought that was going to look too weird. So I'm glad I did the blush color. I was originally thinking more of a gold. Um, which I think would also look good, but I really like the way this one turned out, so I'm very glad I chose this. Um, I'm going to take this one off and we'll put on the other bonnet. The bonus bonnet that I wasn't planning on. I think this bonnet's going to look fantastic with this dress, just saying. The pink and the blue. And my hair might be in the wrong spot for it. A little bit. Not terribly, though. I think the bonnet ribbons might be a bit much. Hair needs to be a little bit lower for this bonnet, but we're going to go with it as is today. There it is. It's very pink. <laughs> very pink. And I can see the trim, which is very strange, but it does like have a reminiscent feeling of the originals. I maybe push down a little bit more and just around the face, but I feel like that looks weird too. Alright, camera died for just a second, but here we are. Um, yeah. It might be a little too much, but this is the 1850s, and we like to do too much. And the 1850s is basically the daughters of the women who did the 1830s, looking at their mother's old fashions and going, yeah, we can do that, but this time let's make it elegant. It's still too much. It's very cupcake-y, um, which is 1850s. That's basically ruffles and lace and frills, and there's no... And there's never enough trim, ever. So yeah, I think this is great for the 50s. Um, I absolutely adore this bonnet with this dress, actually. This is really, really, really cute. But from the side... Back. The other side. All the beautiful trim work we did, which really did not take very long. This one probably t This bonnet took the shortest of all three bonnets. Um, partially because it's not lined or faced, which is really nice in the summer. And partially just because that trim work took me maybe 15 minutes tops. It looks great, but it really was super simple. So that's very helpful and a good note for later um, as far as what is a simple trim to do. So yeah, I'm very happy with it. The weird little three triangle things on the ribbons I took from a photograph. So. Yep, I thought those were interesting, so I was like, hmm, I guess we're going to recreate that, because that's cool, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, I'm very happy with this bonnet, this bonnet is precious. Um, yeah, definitely probably my favorite straw bonnet. It's just so nice, and it'll be great when it's really hot outside, so I'm looking forward to getting to wear it. But yeah, that's basically what we did today, is three different bonnets. So we have early, early, mid-early, and later 1850s. So... 
that was a very productive video. We got three things done. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna store three extra bonnets because I wasn't planning well I was planning on two extra bonnets. I gotta plan it. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna store this one on my head right now. Um, it can't stay here forever. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Very enjoyable projects. I'm happy with the I'm happy with how they all turned out. I uh, love, love, love that silk ribbon. It's gorgeous. It looks so nice. This one isn't silk. And you can tell. Um, I mean, most people can't tell. But I can feel the difference between them. Even though these are satin, so this is a taffeta too. That kind of helps. But I can tell that it's not a real silk when I'm sewing through it. So, um, unfortunately, it's just really hard to find silk ribbon. So, I was very fortunate to have a very sweet friend who um, would give me some of her silk ribbon. So... Yay for new bonnets! Thank you so much for joining me today as we made our three little 1850s bonnets. Have a fantastic week. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you back here on Monday.